Photographers come to me because they either have a lot of clients but aren't profitable, they're on the verge of burnout, or they're profitable but can't book any clients. Today I want to focus on why pricing really matters in both of these issues. Hey boudoir photographers, are you ready to be totally booked out with high paying clients? I'm Tracy Lynn and I went from side hustle photographer to running a million dollar boudoir photography business working just 30 hours a month. That's right, just 30 hours a month. On this podcast, I tell you how I did it and how you can too. Hey there and welcome back. As I just said in the intro, photographers come to me for coaching for one of two reasons. Either they have a lot of clients but they're not profitable and they're on the urge of burnout or they're profitable but can't book any clients and today I'm going to focus on why pricing matters in each of these issues and what you can change to start seeing some positive results in your business. And first of all, we all start somewhere and it's okay if your price lower just differently than what I've recommended because any pricing strategy can work as long as it's built to help you hit your goals. But sometimes what you need is just a mindset shift to make the changes to actually become profitable and book out your schedule. I've talked about it before, but I used to charge $25 to $100 for a session like really early in my career because that's what I saw other photographers charging. And as you can imagine, I was spending a lot of time working and I made no money. I knew I wanted to replace my dental hygiene income, but it wouldn't happen when I'm charging that little. After some education, I revamped my pricing and I jumped in with both feet to in-person sales sessions. It took some time and I made quite a few mistakes that we are going to talk about later in this episode, but now my business is profitable, sustainable, and I don't have to work nearly as hard as I used to. So let's talk about the five pricing mistakes that I see most photographers make. And by the way, if you're making these mistakes, it's totally fine. We can fix them. It's just going to take a little bit of strategy. The first mistake I see a lot of photographers making with their pricing is just following the crowd. And I hear this a lot. Photographers in my area are charging only $200 for all digital files and an hour session on location. First of all, just because a lot of photographers are using the all digital model, that doesn't mean that you need to. In fact, because everyone else in your area is using this pricing strategy, I'd venture to say that that's the exact reason that you should avoid it. There's already enough shoot and burn photographers out there. Being full service will help you stand out from the crowd. A lot of clients really don't want the headache of designing an album or ordering their photos. It's a lot of work and they hire you for a reason. They want to pay you, the professional, to take care of that for them. So let's say a photographer is charging $200 for a one hour session, but you wanna charge $200 for your session fee, but no images and your collection start at 1500. The two of you are speaking to two very different ideal clients. So what that other photographer is charging shouldn't matter to you one bit. The second mistake I see a lot of photographers making is that they want to be all inclusive. And I hear this one a lot. Usually the excuse is the photographer doesn't have time to do in-person sales or IPS for short. And maybe that means all digital packages to them, or maybe it means that they include the session fee with the purchase of a collection, usually including an album, and usually they just let their clients pick the photos online on a gallery. And first of all, this can be a very intimidating price, even if it includes everything. Second of all, from my experience, when you send a client a gallery, or let's say 60 to 80 images, They are so overwhelmed by what to pick that they'll either take days or weeks or they just never actually choose their favorites. So sure, you saved one hour by not needing to do the IPS session, which which could be completed over Zoom in your pajamas. But you've also got work just hanging out over your head for who knows how long, you know? I want to encourage you to consider in-person sales so that you can complete all your work in an efficient manner, but I also want to encourage IPS because to charge the price you need to charge to run a profitable photography business, well, you definitely need to be full service. I'd also like to encourage you to let them experience what you have to offer because you scare them with the big price tag, so it's going to be easier to book. 
Now, the third mistake that I see a lot of photographers making is the way you talk about pricing. And I understand, especially when you're just figuring out your pricing and switching over to higher prices in general, you're going to be nervous. Unless you're just a really great actress, you're not going to sound super confident until you get that first booking under your belt, at least. So what I want to do is give you the exact script you can talk to, talk to your clients about pricing so that you can sound more confident. So here's exactly what I say either an email or during a phone consult. We will go over pricing in more detail at the session when you can actually look through my albums and see what you might want. But my session fee is $299, which includes hair and makeup and four outfit changes. Albums start at $699 and they range up to $49.99 with the average client spending around $1 to $2,000 and getting an album with 10 to 20 images depending on their price point. Popular question, yes, digital files of the images in the album are included. And I have payment plan options available as needed as well. That's literally all I say and it's more than enough to make the clients happy and encourage them to book. Plus, because I have this little speech memorized, I sound very confident. Now, the fourth mistake I see photographers making when it comes to pricing is not being strategic with their pricing strategy. They're just throwing numbers out there. Either they saw another photographer booking sessions at that price, or it's just a number they pulled out of their booty. (laughs) What you want to do instead is think about your cost of sales and your sales average and craft your pricing around these specific things. Otherwise, how do you know if the prices you're throwing out there are even going to make you money? I like to keep my cost of sales around 25%. Cost of sales is anything that goes into making the session happen and the end product. So for example, what's included in my boudoir studio's cost of sales, hair and makeup, my associate photographer's salary, my retoucher's fees, the album expense, and the credit card fees. I'm probably forgetting something, but that's basically it. My sales average is based on my personal and business goals, and everyone's will be different, but that's where my full-time formula comes in, which you can find in my TLC shop, and I'm gonna list that in the show notes. So as you can see, there are strategies to everything because business is one big strategy. And speaking of strategy, the fifth mistake I see photographers making when it comes to pricing is not using a strategic price list. And a strategic price list that sells for you will help you not feel so salesy. This price list encourages clients to spend what you need them to spend without you saying anything, meaning you can go into your sales sessions so much more confident because you know you're gonna hit your sales average goal with ease. To create a strategic price list, you need to know your sales average goal. So let's say you have three collections in your price list. This sales average goal will be the price of your middle collection. The majority of your clients will purchase that middle collection. You'll have a few lower collections purchased and maybe a few of the higher priced collections purchased. And that's gonna keep your sales average right where it needs to be. I've talked about price lists several times in the podcast. So if you wanna hear more about pricing, Be sure to check those out and specifically episode number 60. Now, if you only get one thing from this episode, I want you to know your pricing shouldn't be an accident. You'll have more success if you approach it purposefully. And creating a strategic price list doesn't need to be hard or scary. Your pricing strategy will help you stay in business, not only by keeping you profitable, but by also helping you attract the right type of clients. Your pricing and marketing strategies will work hand in hand to build your business. So how can you create a pricing strategy that will bring those right type of clients? I have just the thing for you. There's a lot more to designing your pricing template than just throwing up some numbers on a sheet and sending it to your clients. And that's why I created my TLC pricing guide. This high converting and easy to use Canva template helps you design a pricing guide based on sales psychology so you can easily hit those two, three, seven, and even 10K sales. And I'm not kidding, I literally have proof that this pricing guide can help you hit both of those specifically. If you wanna know how this pricing guide can help you hit that, go listen to Chelsea's episode about how she had a $9,500 high sale. To make this template even more user-friendly than it already is, I've also included a five-minute instructional video. And if you want to check out this pricing guide, make sure you check out the link in the show notes. 
Thank you for listening to this episode of Sustainable Freedom with Boudoir Photography. Please be sure to rate and follow so that you never miss an episode. They drop every Thursday and they're always full of super actionable information for you to apply right now in your boudoir business. Until then, make your next shoot your best shoot.